Hello and welcome to Ice Warp. This is the third installment in our Setting Up a Mail Server series of tutorials. In this video, we'll be covering creating users in Ice Warp. In our second video, we covered setting up domains in Ice Warp. Creating users is very similar. To create a user, we simply right click and select User. For our new user, we'll first want to fill out an alias. This alias will be the user's email address. After we create an alias, you can also add a unique number for the user's SIP if he or she has one. Under the description, you can put anything additional you would like to delineate the user as, such as job title. Under password, you can manually create a password as the administrator or have Iceware randomly generate one. Once you've entered all the information you feel is important for the user, you can press save. After you've saved the new user, you'll see it under the domain you've specified. Now that our user is established, we can manage some other settings. The Groups tab will let you see and select which mailing list the user is a part of. The Card tab will allow you to input very detailed information about each user, such as their company, birthday, address, and position should you need it. This tab is available for the actual user under the iScore web client, so it isn't the administrator's sole responsibility to populate it. The Limits tab allows you to set the administrator or the company's policies on each individual mailbox. By default, all values are set to zero, which in IceWorp terms means unlimited. Some fields you can limit include mailbox size, the amount of data sent daily, and the amount of daily emails. If you ever need to temporarily shut down an email account, you can do that here as well. Because IceWorp started out as a popular platform among internet service providers, you can also set a time limit on how long an inbox is available to a user before they have to renew. The Policies tab is extremely important for the user and administrator. Here's where you can choose what users have access to certain services. By checking a box for a service, you give that user rights to the service, and by unchecking the box, you remove rights to the service. You'll also see activation keys that will allow you to increase the allowed activation limit for Exchange ActiveSync users, Outlook integration, and the desktop client. Lastly, you'll also see any registered devices a user has for ActiveSync and can make any changes needed. You can make templates that can easily be applied to new users by going to the Domain Templates tab and creating one. The Options tab has several extremely useful features for administrators. The alternate email field allows you to set up the email address a user's password is sent to should they forget it. The Permissions box allows you to give advanced user privileges. Domain Administrator will make them admin for the domain they're in. If you'd like to add certain features or a second or third domain they can have admin privileges for, you can do so by clicking on the Rights button. Administrator gives a user full administrator privileges. Administrators and domain administrators can access the web admin or remote console to manage the system. Domain administrators will only have access to the domains they're assigned while administrators have full system access. You'll notice that user privileges are color-coded. Administrators are colored red, domain administrators are blue, and standard users are gray. Also under the Options tab, you can select which path the mailbox's data will be stored to. You can specify different mailbox paths for any user if needed. This can be very useful if you know certain users will maintain larger mailboxes. This helps you keep from running out of disk space and possibly creates better performance. You can also specify the count to be a remote address, which will then forward all mail to the specified address while keeping no mail locally in this mailbox. You'll see the Refresh Directory Cache button. This is extremely important as all mail is cached in the database now, so if you move or copy any mail files manually for any user, be sure to refresh their directory cache to pick up any of the new changes to their mailbox. There will be spam folder options as well as the option to assign the user to be a spam administrator. The last option to take note of is the user can only send to local domains. By selecting this, the account will only be able to communicate with people within their domain. The Mail tab gives you several useful options for users in the long term. If you need to set incoming email to forward to another email address, internal or external, you can easily do so within the Forward To box. You can also set up an autoresponder. This can be done by the user within the Icework web client as well. Under the Mail tab, you can also set old received mail to automatically delete after a certain amount of time. This only applies to mail in the inbox. 
The VoIP tab allows you to set up voice nice warp and will be covered in depth in another tutorial. Finally, the Rules tab allows you to set very specific rules for each user. The interface is the same as the rules you can set for the entire server, but rules for each individual user will take precedent over the server rules, allowing you to custom tailor user abilities. The last thing to keep in mind is you can provision users, apply changes on MOS, and other user-related items using the command line tool.exe. We'll cover this in another tutorial. Thanks for tuning in to our discussion of creating users in Icework. In our next video, we'll be covering syncing with Active Directory.